you do not want to see <laughs> what was just there. Hopefully you didn't see it because that would spoil a lot of things. Oh, I am such a plonker, aren't I? Hopefully YouTube will have cut that first bit off <laughs> because you're not supposed to see what's over there. Oh, YouTube. Oh, no, I'm not going to blame YouTube. I'm going to blame my phone. Okay. Thanks, phone, for doing me dirty then. Hello. <laughs> I'm really hoping you didn't see the start of that because I'm probably going to have to go and edit the very start of that off. Um, if you missed all of that kerfuffle, I went live with the camera facing the wrong way and I'm working on something that is top secret. So you shouldn't have seen it. Um, so I'm hoping that I can go in and edit this video at the very, chop the very start off. Let's start again. <clears throat> Hello, it's Connie from Faf Designs. I'm live on the Dixie Bell YouTube channel at my usual time slot of 2pm in the afternoon UK time, which should be, I think, 9am over there. Times of, the clocks have changed, things, daytime, daylight saving, all that. I'm confused. I'm very confused. Our clocks changed at the weekend and I don't even know what my own name is currently. I'm waking up early or is it early or is it usual time? I'm tired at about seven o'clock at night, but what is that time? Is it seven or is it eight or is it six? I don't know. I don't know where I am coming or going. I don't know. Every time the clocks change, this happens. It sends my body clock like weird like just all over the place anyway i've got this on because it's absolutely freezing okay so it's 6 a.m there <sighs> i don't know i'm lost with the times i've got this on it's absolutely freezing here in the uk today this is why i hate spring if you follow me on social media or watch my stories you'll know that i hate spring i hate it it's my worst season because you never know what you're going to get. And that's not good. I don't like it. One day, we'll be outside having a good time. Thinking it's sunny and nice. And mowing the lawn. And doing all things nice. The next thing, you've got the heating on. And 17 layers. So, that's why I don't like spring. You don't know where you stand. You don't know what you're going to get. Yesterday, it was a gorgeous day. Sun out. Kids in the garden. Beautiful day. Went a lovely walk over the fields with the dogs at like half six, seven o'clock at night. Still daylight. Today, today, it's horrible. So that's my rant about spring. Anyway, um, hope you're all okay. And um, thank you for joining me. It's quite, clearly quite early for you. Uh, Eastern time zone and it's 9am. Yes, EST, it's 9. 8am North Dakota, still snowing. Oh, okay. I'm moaning about my weather and you've got snow. You've got a cold spring. Okay, I'm moaning. I'm going to take this off because I have just put my little heater on down here and this is probably overkill. Um, and it's also going to get in the way and start knocking things around. Okay, so last week I had my little footstool and I started painting it with chalk mineral paint. Started painting fabric. And it's my first time of actually doing that. So it wasn't really a kind of tutorial it was more a let's give this a crack and see what happens so things have progressed um I've also spoken to some of the other brand ambassadors that paint fabric quite a lot and there's there's various different ways you can do it um as with all furniture painting there's there's more than one way to do something which is really interesting I find so last week i added quite a lot of water to my fabric and then went in and kind of worked it in and it worked really well i've spilt some paint on the top so i'm painting a piece here in mint julep and i mixed some sea spray in it and then i i spilt some of the mint julep here so i have scratched it off um but i need to put another coat of paint pink on this so this is peony there you go, I'll turn it towards the light. It's so dingy here. Um, and I've, I've spilt mint julep on it because that's the kind of chaos that I live in. Um, I am a bit messy. Hello from Texas. Um, but this is three coats of peony 
Um, it's going to need a force because of this issue here, and that's my fault entirely. This is three coats of peony, and I absolutely love it. I love the finish. It feels like fabric. It looks like fabric. It's not hard. It's still got that kind of fluffiness to it because this is it was like a sort of velvety velory um <laughs> yeah exactly it does it wash out of your clothes um so i'm really impressed with this this is just a little footstool that i picked up from a charity shop i thought it'd be cool to do some kind of experimental work on it and i thought i'd bring you along so this is one way of painting fabric so this way definitely works um, Melissa from the Top Drawer RVA, she painted a couch and it's in blues and it's absolutely gorgeous. It looks amazing. And she did it my way. So she added it kind of, I say my way, it's this, this method that I tried. It's not my way at all. Um, lots and lots of water to get the, basically get the, the paint to sit in the fabric so that it still looks like fabric and, and is kind of soft. And that's one way. And then, really interestingly, Tracy, who I know does a lot of artwork on chairs and like crazy, amazing stuff that is well beyond my capability, but she actually seals the fabric first. So I do think that would depend on the fabric that you had. So if you had like a linen-y type fabric, I think that would probably work better. Whereas this is like a velour type fabric. So with all different fabrics, it's going to be a little bit like different types of um, furniture. So there's slightly different prep um, with regards to what you do, depending on the fabric. Same as if you're painting furniture. If you're painting laminate, you're not going to do the same prep as you would if you had a solid wood piece. There's slightly different ways of doing things. It's not right or wrong necessarily with fabric. So Tracy actually seals hers first with boss, I believe it is. And then because it's sealed, she's got a nice kind of solid surface. The paint doesn't sink into it. And obviously she does a lot of hand-drawn designs or hand-painted designs on her fabric. This is just going to be plain pink. I'm not, I'm not getting into that kind of thing. We're just going plain pink. We do have a little, obviously a little bit of green stainage here, which I'm going to cover up. It's going to cover up fine with another coat of pink. So that's okay. That's fine. So in the space of like a week of me buying this, doing my live last week, um, kind of talking to the brand ambassadors about how they do it. Um, yeah, I've learned quite a lot about painting fabric and um, I, I am a little bit hooked actually because I've been looking for an armchair to paint. I think that would just be such a cool project. I think it'd be so cool. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't know if I'd be confident enough to sell anything that's painted quite but I do fancy having a little go with a little, a little like vintage armchair if I can get hold of one. Um, the last one I saw wet the fabric as they wanted to get the paint to dye. Yes, that's exactly what I did. So I saturated this with my water mister and that way the paint kind of soaks in because you've like saturated it and it acts more like a dye. I like it like this. This is kind of the look that I wanted, but again, I don't know if that would work on every single type of fabric. Um, seen a mix of fabric softener. Interesting. Never, not heard that one. But like I say, there are so many different ways of doing something. Just because I've shown you this way, it doesn't mean that it's this, the right way for you or the correct way for somebody else. Or you might have a better way. If you've got a way that works, then crack on with that. But this is just my first attempt and I really like this. So... Aside from the issue with the, the mint julep that I flung when I was stirring my mint julep and my sea spray because I was doing a, a really kind of chippy piece with mint julep. Aside from that mishap, the fabric is looking good. And the one thing that I will say that's kind of like it looks like a common denominator across the board, which I wanted to do with you today, but I can't because I need to put another coat on. And because obviously I'm putting a watery coat on, it takes a while to dry. Um, the one thing that seems to be sort of like the common denominator is using easy peasy spray wax to seal. So Tracy does that. Melissa did that. Malia does that. So that seems to be the best thing to spray it with, to, to seal it with. So um, I'll be doing that. 
I don't know whether I'll be doing it on a live next week. Oh no, I'm not here next week. I'm away next week. We're going away for a few days. Don't rob my house. <laughs> not that there's anything in here that needs that warrants robbing anyway, apart from that piece of furniture, which it's looking tasty. Um, can you see? It's a bit chippy. It's a chippy, chippy, chippy piece of furniture. I've had a lot of fun with that. Um, so, yeah, won't be live next week. So I might see all the... I don't know. I'll see how I go. I'll see how I go. But anyway, sealing seems to be... The Easy Peasy Spray Wax seems to be the way of sealing fabric. So, yeah, I'm really impressed with this. I am going to also now with you just paint these legs because these are plastic. As the title of the live suggests. They're plastic. They're not wood. They were like a dark brown plastic, if you can remember them from last week. So what I've done ahead of this live is I have slick stick these. So just in case you are watching for the first time or you don't know what slick stick is, slick stick is a product. It's actually a primer and it's a problem solving primer, which allows you to paint surfaces that you can't ordinarily get grip with your paint. So if you've ever tried to paint glass or something that's plastic or laminate or metal, you might find that the paint doesn't grip onto that surface very well. And it's too shiny and slippy because most furniture paint is made to stick onto wood. And obviously wood is specially designed to do that. Any other surface you might struggle with. So, Dixie Bell have got a product that is a problem solver. I keep mine. I keep mine in these squeezy bottles because you all know I'm a little bit chaotic and a little bit messy. So I just keep it in here because it's easy to squirt out and the lid doesn't get caked up and the jar doesn't get messy. And it also allows me to uh, put the lid on properly. I'm I'm a nightmare for just placing the lid on top of things not cleaning around the edge. It's bad practice, but I'm terrible for it. So anyway, Slick Stick doesn't come in one of these. It comes in a normal tub, but I just decant mine into one of these because I'm messy. So Slick Stick is a product that allows you to paint on surfaces that you wouldn't ordinarily be, be able to paint on or you, you wouldn't ordinarily be able to get the paint to grip onto. It would be too shiny. So like I've just men mentioned, glass, plastic, metal, laminate, Ikea furniture, um, yes, the squeeze bottles are just the best. And I get big ones like that off Amazon. You can also get like Diddy ones as well, or there's loads and loads of different sizes. So if you mix paint a lot, like if you mix colours, I've just shared a reel on my Instagram uh, about mixing colours. I always used to be a little bit haphazard and crazy and just whack it in a tub and then it used to go hard. So now I've just bought a couple of those squeezy tubes. You can write on the side what is in it. So slick stick or your paint mix or whatever paint ratio you've got in there or whatever product. <coughs> and it keeps it airtight, super easy to decant and they stack really nicely as well. So good if you were a messy painter, because I am terrible. I pulled my mint julep out, haven't used mint julep for ages, and I don't know why, because it's a banging colour. Pulled it out the other day, and it was hard, because I'd done my trick of putting the lid on without cleaning the rim, and I'd just placed it on the top, and it had gone hard. So I'm te I am terrible for it, I'm terrible. Anyway, we move. Um, I don't have a link for the bottles, but if you just type in squeezy bottle into Amazon, I think that's what I search for. I actually got it ages ago because we go camping quite a lot with the kids. And instead of taking like big tubs, because I'm a condiment gal, we, we, we are going way off track here, aren't we? We're not talking about painting, we're talking about condiments. I'm a condiment gal. Like if we're having a barbecue, there's got to be, don't give me dry meat, <laughs> don't. I don't, I mean, I need barbecue sauce as a, as a minimum. So I decant, <laughs> why am I even telling you this? What is my life? What is going on? Um, I decant sauces into them and then I thought they'd be amazing for paint. So I, I got some for paint as well. So there's my story about camping in squeezy bottles. Um, how do you get the product into the squeezy bottle without making a mess? They come, the ones that I bought came with a little funnel came with like a little diddy funnel. I don't know where it is. I don't know. 
I don't know where the funnel is, um, but it's like a sort of, a, it's a funnel that's literally about this big and it just sits in the top of the squeezy tub, in the squeezy bottle and you can pour your product in without making a mess. So that, that came with the pack of mine and I, I think it's in my toolbox somewhere. Um, FIFO bottles, I've just saw, is it FIFO? I don't, I don't know, we don't get them over, we can't get them over here. As far as I'm aware, I've never seen them, but I think they're very similar very very similar type thing there it's just a squeezy bottle with a nozzle isn't it i think unless someone so they're like a, it's like a squeezy plastic you also get uh measurements on the front which is excellent for uh like measuring paint colors out if you're mixing paint that's good that's handy um so yeah that's all i do I, that's what i st store my my slick stick in um like the hat on tin man exactly it's just like a little diddy funnel that just sits in there and then you can just pour your product in. No mess. Squeeze that on. Whack that on. Jobs are good and Anyway, let's paint these. Let's make these look like wood. So Slick Stick, it's a primer. It's a product solving pro a product, a problem solving product. So you don't have to use it all the time. You don't also have to use it on things that are non-wood. So you can use it on wood. So if you have a piece and... I have actually just posted something to my YouTube channel. So this is the latest video. It's a side table um, that I painted in silk all in one mineral paint and the legs were super detailed and there's no way I'm hand sanding that. No, absolutely not. The varnish was very tough, very, very tough. Um, not entirely sure what it was, but it was, it was a great, great original finish. Like that was not budging. And there is no way I was hand sanding all that detail. So Slick Stick came to my rescue and I sat and I timed myself. It only took me 20 minutes to put a coat of Slick Stick on the entire base of the little side table um, versus hand sanding. I'd have been there all day. I'm not even joking. And then you also have to contend with dust. My eyes are very sensitive to dust. They go like golf balls if I get dust in them. So you have to contend with dust. I also have carpal tunnel. I mean, I'm ready for the knacker's yard, I think. Um, I've got really bad carpal tunnel from when my little girl was born. Um, um, how old is she now? 10. 10 years ago, I started with carpal tunnel when I was pregnant. And my doctor said, if you don't rest your wrists, you'll have carpal tunnel for the rest of your life. And guess what I didn't do? Because I'm a bad person. I didn't rest my wrists. And guess what I've got still? carpal tunnel so it's my own fault <laughs> um but hand sanding aggravates my carpal tunnel so if you have issues with dust you can't sand you won't sand well, i don't blame you um you've got health issues i don't know like carpal tunnel like me and hand sanding aggravates them it's just the the the, the like the sort of what's the word i'm looking for i don't know just holding a piece of sandpaper and hand sanding stuff. Ugh. Um, wait until the arthritis hits from the carpal tunnel. Oh, that sounds like fun. I can't, I can't wait for that. That sounds so exciting. Yay. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll be permanently walking around like this, won't I? I shouldn't, I shouldn't take the, uh, this is a, this is an English phrase, take the mickey. So take the mickey is like tormenting or, um, taking a pee. Um, I shouldn't because it's it's not nice. It's not nice. And I've seen people with it worse than me. And this lady that I served, I used to work in a shop, I used to work in retail. And this lady, I was talking to her, a lovely customer, and she couldn't get the coins out of her purse. And she was like, I've got really bad carpal tunnel. Like I can't feel my fingers. And I was like, I've got that. That's basically me, isn't it? That's what's going to happen to me. So anyway, let's, let's not stop this. Just talking about doom and gloom. Wear the wrist braces at night. I do. I do have them. They are possibly one of the most least attractive things I've got um, in my entire wardrobe. But I have got wrist splints. They're so uncomfortable as well. And they make me hot. It's okay in the winter. But they, they make me hot. I'm so sorry for anybody that hasn't got carpal tunnel and does not know what I'm talking about. Me and Stephanie, have, she's got some good tips here. So you're going to have to hit me up after this after this live. Um... Anyway, this is dead quick and easy. Really, really easy. I'm going to sit on the floor. I don't want that. I don't want the stool. This is a... Oh, if you've got legs 
that are not wood. <laughs> Thanks, Stephanie. Um, if you've got legs that are not wood and you want to make them look like wood, this is really, really easy. I'm going to have to get the hairdryer out at some point, so I apologise about that in advance. I've also just got to move my my Crocs out of the way of the heater because we all know what happens when you put rubber Crocs in front of a heater. Also, don't have a paintbrush. What is wrong with me today? Bear with. Um, please hold. <coughs> I got I got a little bit distracted before I came on this live because basically, long story short, Pedro Pascal is all over my TikTok and I can't stop it. And I'm not mad. I'm not mad at it because he is a very attractive man. But he's all over and I got distracted and then I was like, whoop, need to go live. And I forgot my paintbrush. So I'm blaming Pedro Pascal for that. Um... If you need, if you want to make something look like wood, there's a couple of things you can do. So if you, basically you just need to start with a sort of woody colour, which is like a light, a light brown, a brown, a beige. I'm starting with burlap. So I've done two coats of slick stick already on here. So slick stick, you do one coat, you allow it to dry for a couple of hours usually. Second coat, you allow it to dry for 24 hours. So I actually did these at the weekend. So they've been well and truly, it's been dry long enough. So all you need to do is start with a kind of base that looks kind of like a woody shade. So if you wanted it to look darker wood, then you'd go for a darker brown. Um, <laughs> Pedro, nickname your paintbrush Pedro. Okay. <laughs> okay, I will. You don't need to tell me twice. Um... I got distracted by Pedro again, haven't I? Um, he's 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 a he's a good looking guy. He's a good looking guy. Anyway, stop, stop with Pedro. Stop. Um, there's a few. The colour on my phone is weird. The legs look sort of blue. I think that's possibly because number one, the lighting in today is really dull. Two, this orange background throws white weird i have noticed that on my phone as well it's got like a blue hue slick stick is in fact white i think it's the background the orange wall interfering with the it's just throwing it weird colors um i've also got lots of blue and green things around me so that could be white could be reflecting that i don't know anyway slick stick is a white primate it only comes in one color you can tint it. If you want it a little bit darker, you can put a smidge of paint in to tint it. I haven't, but I it can be done, but only a smidge of paint. So I've done two coats of slick stick and I'm just gonna paint burlap. Just, a, just one coat of burlap. I'm not putting any water on this because I just want full coverage. all over so like i say if you wanted a, a sort of a, a wood that looks darker then you could use a darker brown basically it's as easy as that so there's pine cone there's chocolate um you can use anything that's this kind of like torpy color so french linen works um burlap sandbar anything that's kind of neutrally will give you a lighter toned look of wood whereas obviously a darker tone of brown will give you a darker faux finish wood i went with lighter i think i think i'm i think i'm right going with lighter um but this is quite an effective way of making something look like wood and it's quite easy especially if you've got any detail like this so i'll show you in a sec what i mean um, but obviously I've got a little bit of kind of detail on this, on this leg, on these legs, I should say. Like so. Coverage is 
absolutely awesome as with most expel colors to be fair so that's my base color i'm just going to quickly blast it sorry for the for the noise to there we go that should be dry enough and then all you need is best and wax in brown it looks black and thing this it is the lighting in here i need a bit of sunshine in brown i'm going to use this brush because this is the brush that i use obviously as you can tell for wax um this is the french tip and when you buy them brand new they're more pointier than that it's just that i've worn this down i think this is one of the original brushes that i bought when dixie bell came to the uk um and i just use it for brown wax and then wash it every now and again when it gets if it, if the bristles get a little bit clogged up um but because i use brown wax um has anyone accidentally crackled their paint by speed drying with a blow dryer yes i like a bit of crackle obviously if you don't want it it's irritating but yeah you can especially i find it crackles more with um with a heat gun because it's a it's a more kind of intense heat it's hotter um with a heat gun but yeah i've done that and made it bubble before as well um and then all you do is get your best on wax in brown and if you have watched me before you'll notice that i usually put a clear coat on before or clear coat of wax on before I add coloured wax usually for this kind of look I don't because um I find that it removes too much of the brown wax when you wipe if you put if you put clear wax on first and then brown and then wipe it back like I'm going to do in a sec it removes too much of the brown wax so I only put I only put clear wax down first if I want to really control where the coloured wax is going. With this, I kind of want it to look like it's full, like it's all over, if that makes sense. But if you don't want it so intense, I also, oh, it's here. If you don't want it so kind of dark, or if you're a little bit scared, put clear wax down first, then apply your brown wax. That way you've got a slip coat, so it acts as a barrier between your paint and your coloured waxes, whatever wax you're using, obviously this is brown, but it acts as a sort of barrier so that your coloured wax doesn't cling onto your paint underneath. I want it to cling in this case because it's the kind of look that I'm going for, but if you don't want it to, or if you're a little bit scared, you put that clear wax down first and you'll get a lot more control and the ability to wipe back more of the coloured wax if that makes sense i've got quite a few videos on it on my own youtube channel because i love wax i love furniture wax i like the finish i like all the different effects that wax gives um it's actually a really traditional way of finishing furniture painting projects um it's 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 like a, it's like the one of the most traditional ways of doing it but um it's not not i don't like it because it's traditional i just like it because of the finish it gives and the fact that it just gives a really nice sheen and like i say you can affect you can create so many different effects with it so i'm wiping this back a little bit and you'll notice that it's 
Oh, thank you, lunchbox lady. I'm not sure of what your name is, but so I'm calling you what, but thank you. My YouTube channel is only quite small. I actually only started doing regular videos about a year ago on there. Um, and I drop a video on there every other week. Weekly is just too much for me. Um, every other week on there. Um, but yeah, it's growing. It's growing well. Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. So I'm just wiping this back as much as... Basically, I want it. If you want a... Hi! Just flashed up. Hi, Connie. Hello. Um, if you want a more darker brown finish, don't wipe back as much of the brown wax as what I have. Um, yeah, I've been on for a little while. Um, to be honest, up until this point, I have been talking utter nonsense. So you've you've hit me at the right time. Um, and I'm just going to softly rub away at my detail, like the 3D detail here, so that it's going to leave more of the dark brown wax in the recesses and then the light colour that I painted as the base colour, which is this one, burlap, if you've only just, yeah, it's burlap, if you've only just joined me, that's going to bring that out to the front. So it's going to look really three-dimensional instead of looking just flat. Um, that's your second best part, nonsense. Yeah, I I do tend to to talk nonsense. We've had we've had health issues, we've had weather, we've had celebrity celebrity news. Um Pedro Pascal. What else have we had? Um we had a minor slip at the front at the very beginning of the video, which you might have all missed. I'm hoping it cut it off. I'm gonna have to as soon as this is live is finished, I'm going to have to go back and quickly check that the very start of the video has has cut off because it went live and the camera was facing the wrong way. You were facing down at the bottom of my workshop and I've got some top secret work going on down there and it may have may not have shown you what I was working on. So if it is, I'm going to have to snip that snip that off right <laughs> right at the start. Uh yeah, that was a that was a little bit of a slip up. Um so wipe it off. Wipe as much off as you want. Now, I haven't done the inside of the leg because I just wanted to show you what it looks like. Does it look like wood? I also missed a part there with the paint. It's a great demo, great demo. Got white primer showing through. There we go. So it looks more like wood than what it did. It looked like brown shiny plastic before, dark brown shiny plastic. And then the other thing you can do, if you do have any detail or if your foot or your leg has got like um, a shape to it, what you can do is take your original brush with the burlap on or whatever dark brown base or brown base you use, dark brown, light brown, whatever it is. I just find the contrast between burlap and bestang wax in brown. I just find it quite a nice contrast and I find it looks kind of woody-ish. So take off any excess paint that you've got. So you've got, a dry brush there's still pigment on there but when you run your finger over it it's there is still it is still coming off on my finger so take as much paint off as you possibly can and then what you can do is just really lightly run it over the surface and because best and wax is water-based you don't have to worry about paint going over the top you can absolutely do that and just run it over the top like that and it'll just sort of dry brush any detail or like I say if you've got like pretty tulip legs or bun feet you can do the same and you can make it look more three-dimensional um what's your opinion on a stain color to go with antebellum blue um antebellum blue i automatically think dark stain when i think antebellum blue so i'd probably be going as dark as I could with either probably espresso um or maybe like a maybe something with like a warm tone because blue is a cool tone color you could probably use a walnut as well but it depends on the piece 
it's hard to say um but yeah i think i think sort of antebellum blue because it's like a nice tealy blue isn't it i think a dark i automatically think of a dark stain personally but i think it'd look good depends on the piece i think it'd look cool either either or light dark medium my favorite wood stain color no paint gel stain color is actually one of the new ones it's golden ash because I, I just find it a lovely universal tone i really like that tone um but it also depends on the type of wood that you're staining if it's really dark it's not going to do a lot golden ash so it all depends um but yeah that's easy isn't it um and if you've got like a big dresser or something and it hasn't got wooden legs or the legs have got a a dark varnish on them and you don't want to strip them that is a really easy way of giving you like a faux finish faux wood finish for your legs um super easy really quick and like i say you can just chuck whatever brown or sort of torpy color you've got on the base like i say french linen burlap sandbar all of those colors in that kind of range those sort of lighter browns i find work really well with bestang wax in brown um if you were to use that's dixon wood if you were to use pine cone or chocolate or something that's in that kind of darker range you wouldn't get as much of a contrast between the paint and the brown wax but it'd still work it'd still kind of work you might maybe want to add a little bit of black wax in there to darken it possibly um but you can play around with it but it is a, a really really easy way of adding like a, a wooden leg finish to something that might not necessarily have wooden legs so i'm going to um put another coat of paint on this on the top that i accidentally spin spilt a mint julep on you can see the stain now properly there what an idiot um i was just getting a little bit carried away with the paint mixing and the sea spray and it went whoosh, floated out and landed right there right there and i left it till it was dry so that was a good move that was a good move if i had scraped that off when it was wet it would have just gone whoosh, and just rubbed it into the fibers so i left it alone i was very well behaved and then all i did is i got a knife and scratched it off so i think i did myself favors by leaving it but another coat of peony on that and i think it'll be fine i think it'll cover that that stain that i unnecessarily created I made myself more work but that's what i do that's what i do anyway like i said i am not here next week i'm away with the kids for a few days and andy i've allowed him to come as well and the dogs um so i'm not here next week but i will be back the week after um don't ask me the date i don't i don't know some point in april um no i don't know what what is a mint julep drink so is the color paint color mint julep um that's what i was painting with i don't know what is, is mint julep a drink i didn't know that i thought it was just a paint paint name um so yeah be back in a fortnight as always i appreciate you watching and joining in the random chat we've had today the banter um it's always appreciated if you want me to see if you want to see me do any cover any particular products oh it's from the 70s i wasn't around then sorry um and also it sounds like i was probably in the wrong country um it's definitely not a drink that i've heard of in the uk so yeah i didn't know i also didn't know that i didn't know what kudzu was and that's a plant or a weed isn't it we don't have collard greens over here didn't know what that was um <laughs> sorry lisa um what else there's some yeah some of the names i was just i just thought it was a thing i just thought it was a paint name didn't know it was an actual something was named after it always interesting i love it um so uh yeah what was gonna say oh yeah if you want to see me cover any particular products or anything like that in my lives just um let me know drop it in the comments uh, underneath if you're watching on the replay hello um i'm just going to end this now and then really really quickly go back to the beginning and check that the camera wasn't pointing at anything it shouldn't have been otherwise i'm going to get the sack so don't want that to happen because then i don't get to talk to you lot i'd just be sitting here in a conservatory painting
without talking to you lot. So, yeah. Anyway, um, thank you, Stephanie. Yeah, don't forget to hit that like button, folks. Um, and all that. So, thank you, Lisa. I will enjoy my few days away. Probably rain, but, you know, we'll make the best of it. Um, and I'll see you all in two weeks. Have a lovely day. And, um, yeah, catch you later. Bye.